Now let's do a quick walkthrough of the Control 2 software. First thing I want to point out is you have two separate tabs. You have your input control section, and then you have your direct monitor mix section. We'll start with the input section. First button you have is 48 volts phantom power. When I hit this, both inputs will be muted. Now 48 volts is on for both inputs. If you want to shut this off, hit it again. It will mute the input. And now phantom power is shut off. Then you have your channel strips for input 1 and input 2. First thing you can do here is up next to the name of each channel. You can click on the three buttons and link the two channels together. If you're doing stereo miking, this allows you to set the gain to be identical between both channels. I'm not doing that, so I'm not going to link them. Then beneath that, you have your gain control, so you can turn up or down the gain. Pretty self-explanatory. It is also reflective of what you do on the physical dial on the interface. Then you have your auto gain button, which I will demonstrate a little bit later, but this allows Focusrite to set your input gain to an appropriate level in case you don't feel comfortable doing that. Then you have a really helpful meter, which goes from minus 60 dB all the way up to zero dB, and it gives you the peak and a numerical figure here. So I peaked at minus 1.9 dB. If I get too loud, it does clip, it stays red. I can clear that clipping by clicking on it. Very useful meter in my opinion. Beneath that, we have a few more controls. We have the instrument button. This allows you to change the input from a line level or a mic level to an instrument level. You have your air button. You can drop this down to select which air mode you want. If you just want the presence boost or if you want the presence boost and the drive, you can click on this to turn it on or off as well as change it between the options that you have. And then you have your safe button, and I will demonstrate this a little bit later as well, but I want to point out this is not a limiter, this is not a compressor, this just automatically adjusts the gain for that input. Then we have our direct tab, and this allows us to create a mix for our headphones when direct monitoring is turned off. This doesn't adjust what is being played back through the studio monitors. It only adjusts what is being played in the headphones when direct monitoring is turned off. First, you have the ability to turn on stereo or mono monitoring. Right now, it is set to stereo, so input 1 is playing out of the left-hand ear cup. Input 2 is playing out of the right hand. Clicking right here will turn on mono, so now both inputs are dead center. You can adjust how much you hear of each input as well using these faders. Pretty self-explanatory. Double clicking will return that to unity gain as well. You also have a fader for your computer playback, so depending on how loud you want that to be in your headphones, you can bring that down with this fader or you can boost it a little bit. The last control that you have is a mute and a solo button at the bottom of each fader, so if you want to mute one of these inputs or the computer playback in your headphone mix, you have the ability to do that. If you want to solo one of the inputs or the computer playback, you can also do that. And the right-hand meter is going to reflect the monitor monitor mix that is being sent to the headphones. So currently I don't have any playback going and nothing is being reflected. When I unsolo that, now we are monitoring input one and you can see how that is showing up in the headphones using this meter on the right hand side. The last thing that I want to show you is how to manually adjust your sample rate. So you'll click these three buttons in the upper right hand corner and then select preferences. And here you're able to select if you want your sample rate to be 44.1 kilohertz all the way up to 192 kilohertz. And it is as simple as that. That's the walkthrough.